What's going on everybody and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central. I'm back from vacation so the last couple days or four or five days have been uh, kind of off for my channel because I had my laptop which is almost 10 years old and it's really hard to provide updates on the blog and even harder to provide updates on the YouTube channel. So I'm back from vacation. I'm happy to be back guys and there's been a lot of news that's happened over the past week. The biggest news we had was that the Appetite for Destruction reissue was finally released and uh, we've got a flurry of reviews in. So according to Metacritic, which basically averages out all the reviews uh, for different music, games, and movies, uh, right now the Appetite for Destruction Super Deluxe Edition box set is sitting at a 94% rating, which is a lot better than I thought it would be. So going through some of the reviews, we've had eight reviews in total. Kerrang! gave it 100 out of 100. All Music gave it 100. Slant Magazine gave it 90. Classic Rock Magazine gave it 90. Um, I guess they don't post Rolling Stone on here. A Record Collector gave it 80. Mojo gave it 80. Q Magazine gave it an 80. Rolling Stone gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And um, we also had um, another website that for some reason the name eludes me. Uh, they also gave it, I think it's called Louder Sound. They gave it a 4.5 out of 5. And uh, I've listened to a good chunk of the Appetite for Destruction reissue. And I have to say, I'm pretty disappointed with some of the stuff that I've heard. But there's also some great stuff on it as well. I'll be talking more about my thoughts on the album, uh, the re-release anyways, later on in the week. In other news, Enemy.com did a profile on the uh, Guns N' Roses pop-up store that was happening in London. There was one in Toronto, Canada, and I'm sure there was one in LA as well. And they talked about some of the things that would be happening. So they launched this past weekend to celebrate the Appetite for Destruction box set release. And they talked about everything that was going to be available there. So there was going to be um, a lot of alcohol. There was going to be Guns N' Roses inspired Indian Pale Ale that would basically um, bear the track list from Appetite for Destruction. There was also Guns N' Roses uh, wine and gin as well. There was also a, um, an, a talented artist who would paint GNR's album artwork on customized leather jacket all day for only 850 pounds of pop. They also said that uh, it's delicate work. He says, I did the Rolling Stones lip logo in a couple of hours, but when it comes to Guns N' Roses, I'm here all day. They also had some uh, other stuff too. They had a cardboard cutout skeletons wearing uh, Beefeater costumes. And then they also had uh, a tattoo artist there too. So if you guys ever want to get a GNR tattoo, you could get it there at the shop. Although I didn't see how much the pricing was for that. They also had a number of other things to buy, including of course the locked and loaded box set. And they even had, yes, 15, pound, uh, 15 pounds um, you'd pay to get a Guns N' Roses doormat that said knocking on heaven's door. There was also t-shirts, hoodies, keys, and rings, and there was even Guns N' Roses wallpaper, which would set you back around 75 pounds a roll. You'll also get every format of Appetite for Destruction under the sun, be it the, you know, the basic double CD, the deluxe vinyl album, or the super deluxe box set as well. And then they also had, um, the 1988 Ritz show playing on a huge screen as well. Now it's kind of a shame they never included that as part of the box set. So that was, if you guys want to see the rest of the article with some uh, videos, I've linked to it down below. So this was a story that a lot of people didn't know about and this was one of the most read blog posts on my site this past week. I thought this was kind of pathetic to say the least, um, just as a Guns N' Roses fan, but apparently if you guys are interested in buying the $999 US box set, uh, the locked and loaded box set, Guns N' Roses are offering financing options to, to basically fans who want to buy the bundle. So if uh, somebody noticed on GNRmerch.com, this is a screenshot that Guns N' Roses are offering uh, different financing options as low as $88 a month with the website of Firm. So um, I, I don't know how many people are actually going to finance it. I'm sure some people will, but you basically click on the learn more button and then you provide them your phone number and then they see whether you can actually qualify for financing. But I never thought in a million years that Guns N' Roses would offer this for one of their products. I mean, given how expensive some of their tickets are, I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't even offered financing for that. But Turning now to some Sebastian Bach news, so he was interviewed on the Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon podcast and he admitted to being jealous of Axl Rose landing the ACDC gig, so he was asked by Mitch LaFon what he thought when uh, it was announced that Axl was going to be replacing Brian Johnson on the road and Bach said, I was jealous that I didn't get the chance because I fucking sing ACDC pretty good 
And he said, I'm not, and I'm not just saying that. He said, so at first I was like, fuck man, I was jealous, he continued. But then of course I understand obviously why he would get the gig because people don't know how to sing anymore. It's like a dying art. Bach went on to lament the uh, lack of great new vocalists in rock saying, maybe I haven't heard any, but where is the new Jeff Buckley or where's the new Steven Tyler? Okay, Greta Van Fleet, there's a new Robert Plant, that's for sure, right? But there's a lack of original sounding heavy metal vocalists, unless I'm not hearing any, but I don't know. He went on to say, to me, when we were starting out in the 80s, we all knew we had to have our own sound, he explained. That was the goal of every musician back then, because there was no such thing as Pro Tools or computers. I had to find my own vocal sound of Sebastian Bach. And even when I was working on that, even when I first got to Skid Row, John Bon Jovi said, Sebastian, sometimes you sound like Vince Neil, sometimes you sound like Ronnie James Dio, sometimes you sound like Rob Halford, sometimes you sound like Neil Diamond. He goes, you have to find your own sound, and it freaked me out. So during the interview, Bach also confirmed that he is working on a new album that will be coming out soon. And his last release was in 2014 with the album called Give Him Hell. At that time, Give Him Hell was criticized by some critics for sounding too modern and being a departure from Bach's 80s hard rock past. So I don't know if you guys follow the YouTube channel Grunge. They do like a lot of short little mini documentaries on different things in pop culture. And they did one on Axl Rose called The Tragic Real Life Story of Axl Rose. It's pretty decent. There are a couple factual errors in it. But they talk about some of the interviews that he's done in the past, talking about his life and his tough childhood. I recommend you guys check it out. I've linked to it down below in the description box. Our next news story is Guns N' Roses' new single, and I should say new single in quotation marks or with an asterisk. So uh, it is now in the top five songs on the Billboard mainstream rock charts. It moved all the way from number 31, which it debuted at, to number five, which has been stuck at for the last couple weeks. But then you look at the previous weeks too, it was stuck at number six, so it finally moved up to number five. So I'm curious to see whether it's going to hit the number one spot. It probably helps with the Appetite for Destruction box that came out this week, and then also they're on tour for another month or so. We've also got some follow-up to last week's tragic news of uh, Vinnie Paul passing away. So there was an interview that surfaced from 2006 where he talked about what he wanted to happen at his funeral. And some of the things he talked about surprised a lot of people. He revealed that uh, at the time when he was interviewed by Metal Hammer, that at his funeral he wanted Guns N' Roses' debut album, Appetite for Destruction, to be played at his funeral. So he said, I'd really want to choose an album that was a goddamn good time, like fucking Guns N' Roses. I want people to celebrate what we've done and the fact that we had a great life. I wouldn't want my funeral to be a sad, sappy thing. I'd have the whole album, but Paradise City and Welcome to the Jungle would give off a positive vibe. So I read recently that apparently he was buried in the Kiss coffin, and he was buried next to his brother who had passed away in 2004. Now, I haven't seen any confirmation as to whether Appetite for Destruction was actually going to be played at his funeral. So our next news story is some uh, news for you gamers. I don't know how many of you guys play video games. I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, so Mega Man has a new game coming out called Mega Man X Collection. Actually, it's already out, I should say. And they revealed that they are no longer using Guns N' Roses references in their new release. So the upcoming Mega Man X Legacy Collection games will undo a contentious localization decision made by the development of Mega Man X5. So the collection will drop the Guns N' Roses inspired names for the game's bosses, known as Mavericks, and revert them to their original forms. So uh, back in 2001, Mega Man X5 hit North America, and the PlayStation game diverted from the series' boss name and conventions and changed the original Japanese character names to reference Guns N' Roses. So Pi Spike Rosard became Axel the Red, with Axel spelled A-X-L-E. The Crescent Grizzly became Grizzly Slash. Tidal Whale became Duff McQuailen. It was a puzzling decision, and even though Mega Man characters bear musical names, and Capcom board Axel and Slash's names for Final Fights, Rock, and Metal-inspired bad guys. Um, a new trailer for Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2, which was released this past week, designed to highlight the collection's challenge mode, revealed that those GNR names are no longer around. So the trailer shows that Crescent Grizzly, Dark Necrobat, formerly known as Dark Dizzy, after keyboardist Dizzy Reed, and Burn Dinran X, formerly known as Matt Rex, which was a reference to Matt Sorum, have reverted to their original boss names. So in a statement issued to GameSpot about the change, Caps Capcom said it wanted to unify the Mega Man X Maverick naming convention. And the company said to make these uh, collections more authentic, uh, we took the opportunity to better align the naming of Mega Man X5 Maverick across all regions for a better narrative cohesion across the series. So it's actually going to be coming out on July 24th for the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Windows PC. 
So that does it for this week's news. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you love Guns and Roses as much as I do. Also, go follow us on our blog on GNRcentral.com for the latest Guns and Roses news as it happens. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you're enjoying the Appetite for Destruction reissue. Take care.